Hello everybody, welcome to the Jersey Joe Corner. It is brought to you by Big Heads Media. It is going to be a great hockey season uh, coming right up. A lot of interesting things. Uh, Anchor.fm will help you uh, start your podcast and get things rolling. It's going to be a lot smoother when you uh, when you get the Anchor app and it's so much easier to navigate even their online website at anchor.fm is very efficient and you can do a lot of great things with it. With the first pick overall, the New Jersey Devils are proud to select from the U.S. program, Jack Hughes. Hey, Jersey Joe and Jim, this is Bill in Massachusetts. I'm a Bruins fan, but I can't help but listen to your great podcast about hockey, teaching me more than I even knew there was to learn about hockey. So we'll see you on the ice. Keep up the great work. I dig it. Bye. Hello, everybody. This is your host, Jersey Joe, and this is going to be a solo episode. Um, Jim Berger is off today and tomorrow because he has to do his high school hockey referee games, you know, here in the state of New Jersey. Uh, so um, for here on out, um, when I'm off on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, um, I'll be doing solo episodes for here on out until further notice. If, uh, once the season ends for, uh, Jim's, uh, refereeing season. So anyways, um, in this solo episode, we're going to touch up on a lot of the flaws in the devil system. Uh, but I also want to thank a listener, uh, Rob McDonough from the state of Massachusetts, my home state. Uh, he had, he said he learned a lot from, uh, listening to Jim and I talk about, um, many different details about how to improve a team and what happens when t- a team is flawed and the coaching is flawed. Well, I'm going to reiterate on a lot of things. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it under an hour, but, um, maybe half hour at minimal, um, there's going to be a lot I'm going to bring up. And so without further ado, um, I want to talk stats. I want to talk possible trade ideas, stuff like that, because things are looking rather bleak right now. The Devils are about eight points out of a playoff spot. They're last place in the, in the East and the, uh, the Metropolitan. And it's doesn't sound so good, but still, the rival Rangers aren't doing that well either. But without further ado, I mean, Taylor Hall is in a contract year. He's in that make or break type season. I really don't put too much stock into the plus minus, but he's a minus five. But also in 15 games, he has 15 points. But the one thing that you should be worried about if you're an NHL GM for a guy who's 28 going on 29 in a contract year is has Taylor Hall hit his prime? I mean, he had a Hart Trophy season. Arguably, the that year could have gone to uh, Nathan McKinnon of the Colorado Avalanche. But I do think... Paul, I'm not Paul Mary, but Hall is starting to take a decline a little bit more um, goals wise. He's not shooting the puck a lot. He's starting to try and become more of a playmaker. I guess maybe he's trying to revitalize his game, or he just maybe not. 
you know, he doesn't know how to really figure out being on the first line with Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer interchangeably depending on what John Hines is doing. And the coach himself, you know, is starting to finally catch on and holding players accountable. So anyways, Jim and I uh, have always held the coach accountable because, you know, from fans and a podcast standpoint, you know, when you go to these games, whether you're a fan, a contributor, a writer, whatever, um, you want to see that team succeed. And, you know, it's one thing to see your number one center, Jack Hughes, producing with nine points in 17 games, which is pretty good because the first five games weren't that easy, but he is he's really doing well. You know, I know he has a 41.58 uh, face-off percentage, which is still pretty good for a kid who's come up from the USHL, the United States Hockey League, and jumped above college and juniors, which is a huge jump and a huge transition. And... You know, this day and age, that's a really good number for a young center who can really uh, use his speed and agility and the the intelligence. Um, however, Kyle Palmieri, he's doing a lot better than his counterpart, Taylor Hall, uh, because Palmieri is a true sniper. He loves to shoot the puck more. He's six goals in 17 games played, five assists. I mean... When you put the puck on net, um, he has a shot percentage of 14.6, so he's he's really producing. But, um, you know, there are people out there that believe, you know, a guy like Kyle Palmieri, if the Devils keep petering away, you know, falling back further in the standings, you know, you could get something decent, you know, as a return on an investment for Palmieri and try and you know, get the team a little younger, maybe a little bit more uh, defensive. Uh, but And you want the team to be more aggressive. You know, the team themselves, they're more passive than uh, they should be on the back end of the defense. And I'm going to touch up on that defense part. Uh, P.K. Subban is having a tough time transitioning. Uh, into being an offensive defenseman. I know when he was a young guy in Nashville, uh, well, younger guy in Nashville, but I mean Montreal, when he was first brought up, you know, he was like, you know, a young cream of the crop rookie who can bring the energy, fire up the offense, make goalies uh, think more than twice. Uh the way PK is, you know, he's still learning the system. And who knows, like, within three years, if you get Riley Walsh to come up from Harvard University, who can be that successor. But within those three years, you got to be sure um, who's going to be a really good defensive partner. Because, you know, when PK has a line mate who can't, you know, really compliment him, he's stick handling too much he's thinking too much and it puts a strain on your top pairing defenseman uh will butcher uh he's been just fine i mean he has six points in 15 games but um he is shooting the puck a lot but there are times where you know a guy like him will sometimes mismanage or misread a play and not send the puck up into the high danger area on a pass or a shot and sometimes you take too long and the other team is gonna make a turnover and you know you're you're off to the races um it's really uh hard to put that uh big rocket you know for your uh speed game and get back into position because players nowadays are a lot faster. I mean, you play a team like the Pittsburgh Penguins, you know, they have speed, they have skill, and they know what to do with the puck. And, you know, if you play guys like uh, Jesper Bratt, who plays the wing very well, 
I mean, he only has six points in 14 games, but if you play him more time on the ice, you know, he can not only play really good on offense, you know, get to 10 points, 15 points already within like the next uh, five to six games, you're possibly looking at maybe a couple of wins if you can play better defense and have him, you know, play a two-way game and learn from Patrick Eliash when Eliash comes back because Eliash is a uh, he's a special uh, assistant coach. You know, he comes back from Czech Republic to uh, help teach the players how to recorrect their game and what they're doing wrong. Um, Pavel Zaka actually looking decent. Uh, versus versus the past few seasons in his transition to be become more of a finesse power forward, which I think may sound contradictory, but he is so used to playing center in the past. But his thing is more being a winger, and he's better playing on his left side because he's a left shot. Um, but now I mean, back to the defense. Um, Damon Severson is, is still one of your best offensive defensemen. Uh, he has a really good contract for like four or five seasons, just about. Um, what I think is going to happen with Damon Severson, if someone really wants him uh, for a playoff team, I think they're going to have to offer a lot in return. Uh, either a defensive defenseman or you'd have to give a really good forward in return. And, you know, I don't see Miles Wood, a big, speedy, gritty uh, winger on the team for much longer. I mean, he has a few years left on his contract, but he is a guy who can play a West Coast-style hockey game because in the West... It seems every other team, whether it's Calgary or Edmonton or San Jose, St. Louis, they play this physical speed type game, rough and tumble, that would be very complimentary uh, to that league in that conference. And, you know, there's going to be a time where the Devils have to recoup second and third round picks and speaking of recouping you know Taylor Hall is definitely that player that will get you a first a couple seconds maybe and maybe a an early third rounder guy all in that one package but my biggest suggestion would be getting an elite defenseman who can shut down players uh a guy that will be injected into the lineup a guy that can play those top pairing minutes shut down teams and you want to play you know the old Scott Stevens style hockey but I don't mean head hunting I mean going for the shoulder hip checking clean style hockey um because when you're not holding other teams accountable in your end or uh in the neutral zone etc um, other teams are going to gain ground, they're going to get space and time, and they're going to use it, they're going to cash in, and just remember, like, when you looked at the game versus Winnipeg or Buffalo in the first couple days of the season, those are the kind of games that you want to shut down, and there's been too much of the letdowns on home ice, and it seems like, you know, Captain Andy Green, he doesn't you know, he's not a very vocal guy. He's taken a lot of shots over the years, you know, blocking a lot of shots. I mean, Matt Tennyson hasn't really done enough to really benefit the defense on the right side. And, you know, when you're out of position a lot, you're not facing your opponent, it's a lot harder to defend. And speaking of, you know, adjusting the roster, uh, Colton White, uh, the left-handed defenseman came up in a call-up from Binghamton earlier today uh, per Twitter from the New Jersey Devils. And uh, it's good to see a kid like him uh, get called up because he was very close to making the team out of camp. And 
I think, you know, you can't get any worse than it is now. But he won't be in tonight's lineup because, you know, that was what the Devils put out on their feed. And Connor Carrick is still uh, out. He's injured right now. So it really stinks to have that skill and depth, you know, that is currently on the the uh, the pine to speak in the press box. So it really hurts. And also it really, really hurts to have a really good young forward and Jesper Bokvist to be sitting in that press box because he's a young guy from Sweden. You know, he's in his early 20s. He should be getting a lot more time on ice than, let's say, a John Hayden or a Kevin Rooney. I mean, Rooney has a 50% uh, face-off percentage, but, I mean, he's only produced one point in 13 games. One out of 13 doesn't get you anything in this league. Um, Jasper Bulkfist, however, I believe needs to take over uh, that spot and... He should be playing at least third line minutes, and Nikita Gusev to me needs to be playing every other night because you tr- when you trade for a guy and your coach is benching this type of sniper who's starting to make a comeback, you know, being better defensively. He has four goals, two assists. He can play with Jack Hughes. He can play with just about anybody on the second, third line. But um, Blake Coleman still. A really decent uh, winger, and he plays a two-way game, but he needs to refine his play a little bit more, be a little bit more responsible in his own end, uh, not to take too many dumb penalties. is uh, hard to do when every one of your line mates uh, just don't take up enough time and space, and it really is a, an, an occurring theme. Um Speaking of occurring themes, you know, it it gets very redundant when you have, let's say, a Coach Hines who doesn't enough to adjust the roster properly to get the right players in to be productive. And when you have that same corrupt system, it doesn't get you anywhere. It's kind of like um, Happy Gilmore uh, in the movie, his ex-girlfriend to be. Um, said, Happy, you're taking me, you're going nowhere, and there's a problem. You're not any good. And there needs to be a time where things, you know, change for the better because things can only get better from here on out. And I do believe Ray Shiro will make an amendment in the middle of the season or after the season, but. Because of the whole Taylor Hall debacle, it's only going to get, you know, more thinner on the ice. I mean, literally and figuratively, because, you know, with social media nowadays, it's, you know, it's picking up steam and season tickle holders aren't happy. And I know it's hard for me to even digest it sometimes. It gets old toxic and you know if Jim was on here right now we would probably be agreeing or happily disagreeing on certain things and uh, different policies that aren't being implemented uh, in a certain fashion Um, I do believe Tommy Fitzgerald is relaying ideas to Ray Shiro about what's going on on the bench and when your coaches aren't giving enough structure or, excuse me, no structure at all on defense, there's a problem. You, it needs to be addressed. Um, I do see a lot of moving parts, you know, going forward. I mean, we're almost at American Thanksgiving. And American Thanksgiving, there's at least one or two uh, teams outside of uh the top eight seeds in each conference that usually make the playoffs 
like for instance, uh, St. Louis was an exception because after Thanksgiving in the USA, all the way in February, they were starting to come from very worst to win a Stanley Cup. I mean, they were riding a hot goaltender named Jordan Bennington. Um, right now, the Devils have a really good goaltender, Mackenzie Blackwood, yet the defense can't support Blackwood all the time. It's like he has to play uh, out of his mind, you know, making sprawling saves after save. You know, after a while, your number one goaltender is going to get tired. And when that player gets tired, you know, becomes a lot easier to slice like butter. And opponents will be able to dissect that goaltender. Not only that, but your defense. Um, but like I say, you know, this is a team effort, but going forward, there has to be some give and go. And I know I talk a lot, a lot about trading a guy like Taylor Hall. You need to recoup a player that isn't going to want to be here for the near term. And savor it for the long term because when you get a first, a second, and a lead prospect, whatever you can get, you know, for defense, offense, it, it's better to patch it up with a really good player, etc., to build going forward because you want to have players that are committed to playing for the New, Jer- New Jersey Devils and playing for the fans and making everything you know a lot more uh potable you know easy to drink well speak of easy to drink i need to drink some water on this one but i talk about uh what's going on inside the team is also you know what's going on in the locker room i mean there's a lot to talk about because what if, you know, remember Matt Duchesne in Colorado? Some people were saying, you know, is he a locker room cancer? You know, but he did say he wanted out right away. At least he made it known publicly. But to me, when I hear Taylor Hall say certain things uh, after a game or whatever, um, it really, you know makes me worry, you know, not just as a fan, but as an individual who, you know, reports these things on this podcast. And it's hard to be positive when someone uh, has a a monologue that is um, not very positive. And I wish I could be Mr. Positive right now, but the team is below NHL 500 right now. And that's nothing to drink a beer to. It's more like, you know, you need to drink a seltzer to. Um, But I want to, you know, think about, you know, what the Devils can do going forward. I mean, tonight is uh, military appreciation night, you know, supporting the troops and whatnot. You know, the Devils are doing a promotion today. You know, if you're at the game, you know, you can... Obviously, you know, post your photos to Instagram about that. Uh, I do think it's a good uh, cause. But at the same time, I believe the players need to focus on playing without uh, a guy like Sammy Vatnin because of an upper body injury. And because I'm reading... uh, NHL.com backslash devils. Um, it says lineup lineup updates. Um, it says Hines noted that Sammy Vatnin will remain out with an upper body injury, which is what I stated. Uh, he was placed on injury reserved uh, retroactive to the team's game on November 8th in Edmonton. Uh, Kevin Rooney is also out due to injury, meaning... Jesper Boakfist is in. Woohoo! It's great to see change, you know? 
Uh, defenseman Colton White was recalled from AHL Binghamton, but won't play tonight, uh, which I talked about. So, as of now, for the lineup itself, Hines said he hasn't set the lines just yet. Um, also, another thing is uh, Sidney Crosby is out. Uh, the Penguins have injury troubles of their own with defenseman Chris Latang and captain Sidney Crosby both out. Crosby is out at least for the next six weeks with a core muscle injury. Uh, so what Hines had to say with those two guys in the lineup, they're dynamic players. You realize with those guys out, but the one thing you have to respect for is the play is the is for they play the same game regardless of who is in the lineup they're deep they're one of the teams that's proven that if they have someone out of the lineup they share those minutes around it doesn't change our preparation aside from power play tendencies and face-off indices uh and also, uh, double center Travis Zajac agreed with his coach on those quotes, and it goes from here that Zajac also said, saying, adding to it, they compete, they work hard, they s- still have Gino, known as Evgeny Malkin who can make plays and other guys who are dangerous. I agree with that. Um, It's got to be about our game more than anything. Uh, He also said at the end of the day, if we play well, we're winning games, end quote. Um, So when you're going up against a team traditionally that is deeper, more skilled, more athletic, well coached, you know. It reminds me about the art of war and Sun Tzu's teachings, you know. It's not always the most skilled, but it's also the most uh witty of teams that are well coached and when you're able to outsmart your opponents, you know, you can deceive them, you can do all sorts of maneuvers, you know. In the NHL, it's uh, it's important to you know change positioning on your opponent, whether you're transitioning through uh, the neutral zone into the offensive zone on your opponent, uh, pretending you're gonna score from the left point, and then you pass or you skate the puck around, and you go to the right faceoff dot or below that in the in the high danger. And you pass to a guy who's right outside the crease. And he just taps the puck in. You know, that simple hockey right there that, you know, you use to your advantage when you are well coached. But also, like, in order to get, you know, the puck, you have to be tough on the other team. You got to take away their time and space disrupt them you know you got to attack the puck carrier you got to be disciplined in how you approach them and you got to lift up the sticks tie up a stick uh you got to make sure you take away the shooting lanes because you know guys these days are snipers they're they're trained they know where to shoot the puck they they see they see a hole in a goaltender's game they're gonna shoot um at will and you look at goaltenders you know if they have some sort of traffic or some sort of disruption um it's best to see a guy like a pk suban or damon severson or a butcher just to name a few guys that can shoot the puck at will and hopefully you know something goes off a player or someone else's body or stick goes in and and you're like, what the heck just happened? We scored. But um, you also still have to defend. 
And when you're when you're skating back, you know, you got to face the puck carrier. You got to play the puck. You can't, you know, second guess. You got to be exact. And this is what is not being implemented properly. We've seen so many uh, different things throughout this uh, season on this podcast. We, Jim and I have mentioned there's so many conundrums that this team has to iron out. And getting a little dried up here. When the team is getting a little tired in their own zone, it's hard to get a guy out and change the whole line because you don't want to give an extra advantage to the other team that's in your own zone. And there's going to be a moment in time where, you know, the Devils are going to change up the coaching staff. They're going to change up the player personnel because you want to have the right guys who can play a more defensive style of game, be more aggressive. If you play passive in this league, you know, you're guaranteeing a lot more time and space, creativity in the defensive zone. And it's going to come back to bite you. And it's bitten the devils a lot. And as a fan, as a podcast guy, as someone who contributes for Pucks and Pitchforks on Fan Sided and on the Puck Authority. Uh, I do mention, you know, this is one of those things that comes back to bite a team. And you can see that well-trained teams can play all facets of the game. If you can handle yourself in your own zone, you know, on defense, you can reduce the amount of goals. You can get more offensive firepower when a bunch of one goal leads or when multi goal leads. You know, this is why teams like Washington and the Islanders, to name a few, are ahead in the in the Metropolitan, along with a team that uh I'm not a fan of at all. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. So it's really tough. I mean, you look at Washington's goals forced versus goals allowed. They have 19 goals plus in their favor versus 19 goals less. You'd rather trade what the Washington Capitals have done where they have 14 wins, two regulation losses, and four overtime points. So that's 12 regulation wins. Uh, yeah, they have a really well-balanced team. They have really good skill and depth down the middle. Like Kuznetsov is one of them and Backstrom. You know, just to name a few really excellent players. And in this league, having centers that can play not just offense, but also defense is key. And when you have skilled wingers, you have everyone clicking on defense and that allows your goaltenders to, you know, recoup. And if they give up a goal, it's like nothing ever happened. You know, I wish we had, you know, that kind of system, but you know, with the way things are going on the staff right now, it just doesn't look like it's possible. Um, Another good team is Montreal. Montreal has a goals forced of 64 to 56. That's plus 8. And Montreal has a really good balance of 6 wins, 3 losses at home and they're 4, 2 and 3 away from home. It's one of the reasons why that they're pretty close to uh the standings with Boston. They're only 3 points out of first in the, in the Atlantic. But, you know, it's a lot harder looking in because the Devils are, what, they have 44 points and you have, no, not 44 points. You have four regulation wins. That's really hard. That's not good going forward. 
14 points and Rangers have 18. I mean, the wild card is not looking good for either team. And at this point, it looks like double centers, uh, Red Wings, even the Blue Jackets look like they will be sellers before February. So there's not much to add here, but um, by November 18th, we'll have Manscaped for our sponsor. Um, for our listeners, international and abroad, you can send us um, your voice messages and uh, send Jim and I some ideas. And thank you for listening. Let's go Devils. Hello, Devils fans and uh, and podcast listeners of the Jersey Joe Corner. If you want to sponsor the Jersey Joe Corner, you can support me and the podcast on uh, the Jersey Joe Corner Patreon page, or you can uh, support me here on Anchor, or you can go to the Jersey Joe Corner uh, teespring.com website. And currently, through the 27th of of Octo- of uh September rather 927 2019 is uh when 25% off of Jersey Joe Corner applicable merchandise through that time so um if you want to do that you're more than welcome to join in and uh and see and see me for details thank you let's go devils <laughs>